Hi, I'm Crispin Sartwell. Uh, I teach philosophy at Dickinson College in Carlisle, PA. And I'm the author of Against the State, an Introduction to Anarchist Political Theory. The focus of the book is the destruction of all the traditional arguments in favor of the moral legitimacy of state power. I, I think there is no moral justification for state power whatsoever. And that would entail that it's not the case that the state ought to exist. So that's the thrust of the argument. I mean, it's rather a philosophical uh, than a practical approach to these questions, I suppose. So I'm not really saying, here's a vision of our anarchist future. I'm saying, here's what's wrong with the justifications of state power. Here's why state power cannot be justified. I mean, the most traditional arguments in favor of state power are probably social contract theories. Uh, connected with uh, figures like Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau, and also connected uh, with the American Constitution, which is actually formulated as a contract. Uh, and the basic thrust of that argument is that we are subject to state power in virtue of our agreement to be uh, subject to that power. Um, but this is a ridiculously bad argument. Uh, I mean, it, for one thing, because I cannot withdraw my agreement. Um, so, I mean, I, I, don't, I do not consent to be ruled by the state of Pennsylvania or the United States government, but I'm not in a position where I can withdraw uh, or where I can be uh, immune from that power in virtue of failing to consent. And so uh, consent isn't in question at all. I mean, I face overwhelming uh, force and uh, you know, so the legitimacy of the state does not rest on the consent of the governed. If it did, there would be no legitimate states. Well, I've probably been an anarchist since I was 12 or 11. Uh, growing up in DC will turn you into an anarchist, um, or it might. Uh, I'm expecting the revolution to emerge from Wheaton you know, you know, high schoolers in the, in the D.C. area who are uh, sort of uh, embroiled in the uh, bureaucracy of the American state. Um, I, my, my parents were Marxists, and I was sort of a baby Marxist for a little while. And then I read, uh, you know, Emma Goldman and figures like that uh, when I was quite young. And I realized that, you know, Marxism is a totalitarian philosophy, in my view. Uh, and, you know, my basic idea was that freedom is the most valuable political uh, goal. And that if, if that's the case, then I couldn't be a Marxist. It's certainly outside the spectrum of contemporary American politics, left and right. Because I think both the left and the right are enthusiasts for state power. I mean, I think you can see this just in the, you know, the George Bush budgets or something like that. You know, I mean, there used to be quite an active libertarian wing of fairly mainstream right-wing politics, republicanism. Uh, that, you know, that is, seems to be long gone. Uh, and what we have on the left and the right is statist solutions to any given problem. I'm pessimistic about, uh, it, it seems to me that for hundreds of years, essentially, the power of the state has increased uh, steadily, you know, with little glitches here and there. And it strikes me as very likely that that will continue to be the case uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, and I don't see any kind of social movement that can effectively uh, put a halt to that. So I expect, you know, that as I say in the book, my, my children's children will be even more thoroughly flypaper to the state than I am. All the wars of the 20th century, all the genocides of the 20th century, state power is a necessary condition uh, for those wars, wars and genocides. And it's, I think that as state power increases, the power of states to accomplish you know, massive slaughter 
increases steadily. And so that I feel like the state is likely to be the end of the human species. So that's not too optimistic, I suppose. <laughs>